Hello everyone. Today's uh, lesson is about uh, how to draw a cylinder in one point perspective. So we have a horizon line. I'm just going to sketch these uh, drawings quite simply. We have a vanishing point and we draw down two, uh, two lines. Okay, uh, firstly we make a line across like so and uh, then another one where we make a square in perspective. Now we divide this square by taking a line across like that, a diagonal line, and then we've got the exact point of, uh, the exact centre point then we draw a horizontal line and a vertical line. Now the reason I'm doing this is to make it, to show you a way we can make an ellipse which is accurate. So start the ellipse from about here and uh, go to that point. Uh, it's very important to not uh, to not have any straight line when we're coming around to these edges especially. Uh, we start from behind the point and keep going. So uh, this is just a, these are just quick sketches I'm doing for you. Um, no rulers or anything like that. So we've got that, um, that ellipse there. So then we want to project a vertical line up here and another vertical line up here and uh, we choose a point that will be where the top of the the uh, s cylinder will be then we take that through to the uh, vanishing point and another one to there and then we come up from these back uh, corners here and that goes up to about there and likewise just draw a free hand and practice these as often as you can then we uh, we've got those two points and now uh, we have another square in perspective and we do the same thing we uh, divide it now we don't have to do this all the time just uh, you can just do it just simply by sketching it but that's how you would try to make an accurate ellipse. Now the point of doing this in perspective, using one point perspective, is quite simple. It's absolutely important with a, drawing a cylinder that this ellipse and this ellipse relate to one another, and they certainly do in this case, because uh, this is uh, the bottom and it's much much uh, broader and fuller this one's more narrow so simply we just take a line from the top and the bottom and likewise just uh, try that okay so I'll just um, get a darker pencil and try and show you how we might do that again so we well starting with this one we make an ellipse we draw a, a square in perspective in one point perspective then in that square we divide it up in a certain way so that we can um, have an accurate ellipse then we uh, project up to the top and then we join the edges of those two uh, points to one another and then what we can do now is erase the the uh, all the guidelines and there we have it we have a a perfect ellipse in fact 
I'll just put a bit of turn in it just to make it clearer what we've just made. Okay, so there's our first ellipse with um, the bottom, uh, sorry, our first cylinder with the bottom and the top ellipse is relating perfectly. This is very important. Now, another thing that we could do is we can uh, do another horizontal line. That's the horizon. We can uh, make a vanishing point here. And I'm going to show you how this is, uh, in practice, what, what the value of this is. So we can project two lines down once again. And uh, I want you to imagine that this is maybe a room or a space and we've got, uh, we want to put people, imagine we, we're designing a, a page for a, a comic or a children's book or something where we're, where we're using uh, or placing people in the, in the scene. Now when we uh, want to place people in the scene we want to think about scale. So here we going. Here we going to draw our uh, ellipse, and I'm going to make this into some kind of furniture item, which we can use for scale. Now, a good one would be uh, a little table. We could make a little table, and uh, with the, with that table, we can see how it would relate to a person. Coming up from that point again, and that one again, just up to there. Okay, here's the table top. We'll draw our ellipse again. Now, this is so convenient and handy if you want to uh, depict something real in in your scene and uh, make a make something like a, a table or a, a, a doorway. Doorways are often very useful to figure out the scale. Okay, it's a bit rough, but not to worry. I'm just doing these quickly. I'm not trying to make a finished product out of it. I just want to demonstrate, say, you put, we'll put some legs on the table and they can relate to that, to the, uh, those points in the in the um, uh, initial drawing. Okay, so we've got uh, our little table, the round table as it were, and uh, we can place a figure here. And thinking of the scale, imagine you're standing next to your say dining table and uh, you would be about that high off the table above the table so we might uh, put a character down here and uh, put some uh, put her feet down here and uh, she might be putting something on the table, a plate or something like that. So this is, um, this is a, a room now. We can make some kind of uh, um, picture, uh, some kind of scene. Now, if we wanted to put um, another figure in, we could quite easily trace that down like so. And we can uh, put someone in the background. So we might draw a line from the, going down here, going to her head, and likewise. And this can come over here, and this can be a, another character. Um, maybe it's um, uh, her dad or something like that, and he's a bit taller, so we can put her heads below that, but his head can be above that, and um, he can just be coming into the room and uh, like so. I know they're simple stick figures but I hope you get the point. Okay so cylinders are really helpful for many things. 
and as an artist if you can start to learn uh, this simple trick of, um, of looking at any scene no matter what scene you're looking at and reduce it down to its simplest form so for example say you wanted to uh, we well, were going to draw a, a, a figure and uh, you think oh my goodness that's pretty tricky drawing figures uh, just like that but if you simplify that figure into a basic shape and in this case we're using the basic shape of, of uh, cylinders and you can see that you know in the human arm for example it's quite simply made up of the basic shape of this of the ellipses and therefore cylinder so these uh, this arm can be a just an, a kind of cylinder so this this cylinder was easy enough to draw so you can do the same thing here and you can get the fullness and the um, uh, the kind of uh, simplified making it easier for you um, and the more you start to look at these basic shapes as um, being uh, in in nature or in the man-made world if you can start to see them he's a pretty rough looking leg but um, I can draw legs I assure you okay so um, we've got a, a simple leg here and uh, then we can once again we can see we can see cylinders within uh, within in this leg so the bottom leg and the top leg are just a couple of cylinders so thinking about other examples of um, uh, basic shapes we, in, just with the human body think uh, the head could be a sphere um, the uh, rib cage could be a cube and so forth so the cylinders and cubes and uh, cones and spheres all throughout nature so artists hundreds of years ago worked out that if we simplify all of nature into basic shapes those four basic shapes and combinations of those four basic shapes we can uh, simplify everything uh, easily and so we uh, our observation improves dramatically I'll give you one more because I want to do something special for you over here but uh, just to show you, I mean, uh, start to think about it. Think of reducing everything that you look at to basic shapes. So if you uh, consider uh, an old tree stump, for example, I can you know where I'm going to with this one obviously uh, you can see it straight away if I've if I've been able to convey this um, to you that obviously we've got a cylinder in the trunk in the roots etc what else uh, what other shapes could basic shapes could we see in a tree so the the leaf mass could be a sphere and uh, the the um, branches they're definitely cylinders there might be some cones somewhere so try to um, look around you now and reduce everything to basic shapes and uh, you will start to see in a much simpler and uh, in more efficient way and therefore your drawing is going to start to really improve okay we've got that um, done uh, there could be hundreds of little drawings I'm going to do something over here which I think might be interesting for you uh, I'll make a little bit more finish on this one uh, another drawing for you here and this is um, um, I want to show you that by using the basic shape of the cylinder uh, we can um, we can draw something which is the most ordinary thing you could imagine and yet it's um, we can turn it into art and that's uh, all up to you so
just have a little uh, break from the drawing for a moment just to show you uh, the colours that I'm using, uh, I'm going to use I should say. So the first colour is um, French ultramarine blue and uh, the warmer colour is the burnt sienna. Now I'm using these two colours to make greys and um, I think you'll uh, see that you can make some very beautiful greys but don't um, mix too suddenly just um, try to mix it uh, gently and carefully and loosely and don't make it too dark straight away when we use watercolour we work from light to dark if you come in too dark well at first you'll find that um, you, it's very hard to erase any uh, mistakes that you might make so um, just go at it slowly and gently <laughs> okay that's all I can say hope you enjoy the rest of the video Thank you very much for watching everybody. I hope the uh, video was uh, helpful to you in your art. Uh, one point perspective uh, drawing of a cylinder is a very useful and very uh, helpful uh, thing to know. So uh, I hope you, uh, it, you were helped. Please uh, support my channel by subscribing and by leaving a comment hopefully and uh, a thumbs up would be nice. Thank you very much. See you in the next video.